I'm going to show you how to make this quirky little pair of spiral earrings here. Okay, for that you're going to need a couple of your satin beads. Okay, you're going to need some size 11 o seed beads, some size 8 o seed beads. You're going to need some fire line. You can use six pound or eight pound. Either of those will work. A size 10 or a size 12 beading needle, a pair of sharp scissors, um, a pair of pliers. If you have a thread zapper, you can use a thread zapper. If not, you can just use the scissors for that. Okay, now it's basically just peyote stitch. So you can start this off using a peyote starter strip, but I'm going to show you how to do it without one in case you haven't got one. Okay. Right, so we're going to start off by putting a stopper bead on our thread. Um, you don't need too much thread, probably about three feet. And leave a tail of about four inches or six inches, just enough that you can thread your uh, the end, end of your thread back through the work at the end. And then what I've done is I've threaded onto my needle and thread 60 of the size 11 seed beads. Okay, so that's my starting point. Now I'm just going to do peyote stitch all the way back up these 60 beads using the size 11 seed beads. So I'm going to pick up another size 11 seed bead. I'm going to jump over the first bead here and I'm going to go into the second bead along. Okay, pull that tight so that the two last beads sit next to each other like that. Okay. Then again, I'm going to pick up a size 11 seed bead and I'm going to skip the next bead and go into the one after that. Okay, just make sure you don't get your thread tangled around your work. Okay, so now you've got that. And then you just carry on like that. Try to keep your tension quite tight. Um, so every time you're just picking up one bead, skipping over the next bead, going into the one after that. It's just ordinary peyote stitch. Okay, so you're going to finish that row like that. So now I've finished that row all the way to the end. As you can see now, I've got three rows of peyote stitch because obviously the first 60 beads that I threaded on, those made up my first two rows. And I've just added a third row of peyote stitch. Okay, so now I'm back to where my tail thread is. Now I'm going to turn around again and I'm going to do the same thing again, but using my 8 seed beads. So now I'm going to pick up an 8 seed bead and I'm going to go back through the first 11 row that is sticking out. Okay, like that. Then pick up an ATO again, go through the next one. Again, it's just basic peyote stitching all the way along. Okay, now you'll see when you start adding the larger beads, you'll see that it's starting to curve a little bit already. Obviously, because these beads are larger, so they take up more space than the 11 O's. So it's going to start curving a little bit, which is what you want. Okay, so you want to carry on like that until you get to the end of the row. Okay, can you see it's curving quite nicely there. Okay, so finish the row like that. Okay, so now finish that all the way along and you can see it's kind of looking a bit like a spiral now just need to twist it so it kind of behaves properly but eventually it becomes a spiral okay so now you're going to do the same thing again you're going to do another row of peyote stitch using the size 8 seed beads so again you're going to pick up your 8 and you're going to go through the first 8 that is sticking out okay just like that and again because you're using the larger beads it's going to start curving a little bit more and turning into more of a spiral okay so again just carry on try to keep your tension fairly tight it doesn't have to be extremely tight just 
you know, tight enough. So you can see it's curving a little bit more there. Okay, it's starting to look quite pretty now. Okay, so just carry on like that until you get back to the end of the row. Okay. Right. Right, so now I've finished that row. So now you can see I've got my three rows in my 11 O's, but I've got two rows using the eight O seed beads. Okay, now if it does look a bit of a mess like that, just help it around so that it's twisting in the right direction. You can see there it becomes a spiral. Okay, don't worry about it too much at this point. You can always straighten it out later on. Not straighten it out, but sort of make it into the right shape later on so it doesn't matter at the moment if it's a bit wonky okay so now what you're going to do is you're going to take off your stopper bead from the end of your tail thread okay and then you're going to take your tail thread and your working thread and you're going to tie them into a knot you can either tie three knots I like to tie three knots or you can do a surgeon's knot if that's what you prefer Okay, at this point I will put a needle on my tail thread and just work it back through a few beads before I cut it off. Okay, then you're going to take your working thread. Okay, now this is where you're going to need your, your satin bead. Okay, now you're going to pick up two of your 11 O seed beads. You're going to pick up your satin bead and you're going to pick up another one of your 11 O seed beads. Okay, bring it down to your work. Then you're gonna go back through your satin bead and the two 11 O's that you picked up here. Okay, and you're also gonna go through this very last 11 O at the bottom of your work. Okay, pull it tight. Now, if your thread scrunches up, then what you need to do is you hold onto this little 11 O at the end of your satin bead and then pull it tight and you'll see the whole thing comes together like that okay then what you're going to do is you're going to work your way back to the other end to scrunch it up even more into a spiral what you the way you're going to do that is you're going to go through this next 11 o which is sticking out here okay and then you're going to go through without adding any beads you're going to go through all of the 11 O beads that are sticking out. It's as if you were doing a row, another row of peyote stitch but without adding on any beads. Okay, so just work your way. Don't worry too much about pulling it tight at this moment. You'll pull it tight when you get to the end. So just work your way through all those 11 O's that are sticking out. Okay, no more beads to add here because you want to pull the the inner side of your spiral in as tightly as you can to make it spiral really nicely. Okay. Just keep going through all the all the out beads. Okay, nearly there. Okay, last two. There you go. Okay. And then once you've done that, you'll see it's already looking quite nice, but when you pull it, it goes really tight, just like that. Okay, now obviously the weight of the, the satin bead is going to hold it so it doesn't all scrunch up into a circle like that. It's going to sit quite nicely like that, but you can adjust how tight you want to pull it. 
um, you can pull it tighter or looser. If you if this is your second earring, um, I've got the other one here, then just make sure that they they're kind of similar in the length when you pull this tight here. Okay. And then all you're going to do is you're going to go back through the 11 o that's next to the one that you're coming out of. Okay, and pull your thread tight, as tight as you want it, depending on how long your other earring is. Okay, then you're going to come back out through that same bead that you were coming out of originally. Okay, you just basically you're stopping your thread from becoming loose again. And do that again, do another circle like that. Okay, now you're going to pick up seven of your 11 o seed beads. Three, four. Seven. This is going to make you a loop that you can use to hang uh, your earring off a shepherd's hook. Okay. Then you're going to go back down this 11 o again that you that's next to the one that you're coming out of. Okay, like so. And then back again through this whole circle of beads because with my loops I like to go through the beads twice just to make sure that it's quite tight. I mean the fine line thread is quite strong anyway. It's not likely to break, but I like to be sure. Okay, then back down through the, the one that's at the end of your work. Like that. So that's your little loop that you're going to attach to your shepherd's hook. Okay, and then you finish off your thread here by just doing a little knot like that. Go through your loop. Okay, you can do a couple of those. Make sure it doesn't come undone. Okay, then go through the next 11 o along so you hide your knot that you've just made there. And to the one after that. Just go through a few of them. Okay, and then I like to do another knot here. Again, just to make sure that it doesn't come undone. Okay, so do your loop, then go through that loop, pull it tight, and then go through a couple of your 11 O's again. And then you can cut off your thread, or you can burn it off with your thread zapper. Okay. Now I haven't finished off the tail thread on this one, but um, you'd finish that off in the same way on the other side. You don't need to do any knots because you obviously you tied it to the to the working thread. Okay, and then all you're going to do is you're going to take your two pairs of pliers. Actually, you only need one pair because you haven't got a jump ring here. You can add a jump ring if you wanted to, but you don't have to. You can just add it directly onto your shepherd's hook. And then close. And there's your little earring. Just need to get rid of the tail thread. Okay, and there's the other one. And that's it.